A common narrative in our culture today is that there's conflict between science and the Christian faith. But is this really the case? I'm joined today by Dr. Michael Strauss, who is a particle physicist and a Christian, to help unpack that question. Um, Mike, we've talked in the past couple of episodes about the idea that there really isn't a reason to think that there should be conflict between science and Christianity. We talked a little bit about evidence for God's existence, and part of that is the design that we see in the universe. We see design in biology as well, and that design suggests the designer, yet there are many people in the scientific community that are highly resistant to the idea of intelligent design. Why do you think that is? Yeah, that's an interesting question that I get asked a lot, and it's a very hard question to answer. Um, first of all, when you say intelligent design, do you mean you know, the official intelligent design movement, which is um, you know, a group of people working on evidence for God and biological systems primarily? But I'd rather add, answer the question more along a, a broader line. Do you just see evidence for design in general in the universe or an intelligence behind it? And why are people resistant to that? But even that's a hard question to answer because you're asking me to answer for somebody else, right? Which is dangerous ground to walk on. Um, so let me give you some ideas. You know, um, why do people reject plain evidence? Well, somehow at times it's a moral or volitional issue in this case, right? If I accept that there's an intelligent designer, then I'm going to have to maybe be accountable to that. And there are people who have been frank enough to say, I reject God because of the consequences of what would happen if there is a God. So I think that's one thing. Um, Jesus said it was easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And you can ask, why is that so? And, and I'm not sure, but I can speculate. Uh, one thing is that a lot of rich men are um, pretty self-sufficient. They have made it on their own. They have a lot of um, confidence in who they are, maybe a lot of pride. And scientists tend to be like that. Scientists are extremely bright. They're extremely accomplished. And maybe there's some of those same issues, is that they have a feeling that they are self-sufficient and don't need any God. And then there's another reason. It's a misconception. A misconception that if you say there's an intelligent designer who's done it, then you thwart any further investigation. And really, that can't be farther from the truth. Um, I've used the illustration of artists before, and I've read and seen on TV specials about art critics who are looking you know, intimately at how a painting was painted. So yes, we know that there's an intelligent designer behind that painting. That doesn't thwart the question of how did he do it? What techniques did he use? Um, did he paint over a previous painting? Did he draw a sketch first? Or, or in anything. How or are the why? pyramids? Why? Or did, why? Why did he paint the painting? Yeah, why may even be the be better question. And so um, I think we need to kind of dispel that misconception. Just because we say there's evidence that there's an intelligent designer behind it is not stopping the, the inquiry. It's starting the, the inquiry. Why and how? And what did he, what methods did he use? And so I think then you can acknowledge that there's intelligence behind what I see, or that it looks like there's intelligence behind what I see, and then go further into the investigation of all the scientific questions about how the plan was carried out, how the intelligent designer implemented the creation of what we see. Well, you know, I'm often confronted with that very objection. Mm. And one of the points that I like to make, and I'd be interested in hearing your comment, is that each paradigm has a unique set of questions that it asks. And so just because you move from one paradigm to another doesn't mean the questioning stops. It just means that the, not, the nature of the questions may be different. Yeah. And I think within a Christian worldview paradigm, you actually have a broader amount of questions. If there is a supernatural being who created the universe, most of the time his creation is through natural processes. Um, Every child born of the world is a natural process, right? Every star born has been a natural process. And most of the time, that's how God works. But occasionally, he steps in and does what we call a miracle. And, and we don't, as scientists, appeal to miracles as the method of God's normal creation. So I don't appeal to miracles as the method 
of what God is normally doing in the lab. But it certainly opens up a broader paradigm of the kinds of things you can investigate. If you take miracles off the table for the resurrection, you might never come to the truth of what happened that first Easter Sunday. And so as a scientist who's a Christian with a different paradigm, I actually have a much broader possibility for the answers to investigate. But I do believe most of the time the answer I find will be that God works through the normal means.